Genesis chapter 4, the life of a man is like a pepper. It appears for this moment, and the next moment is gone. Every one of us is standing before God one day to give account of ourselves. There are only two questions, and every one of the time God is going to ask you. I just want to inspire you this morning. See, when you're not inspired, you will expire. I want to just talk to you briefly this morning on, I didn't plan to preach this morning, but I just felt in my heart to challenge you just by a short word. Don't swim in shallow waters. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass, as people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesaret. Are you in Luke 5? If you're there, say, I'm there. If you're not there, say, I'm not there. So some of you are not there. He saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them. And what were they doing? Washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. And prayed him that he should trust that a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from where? Out of the ship. And when he had finished speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. Say with me, launch out into the deep. Say with me, I will not swim in shallow waters. And Simon asked, he said unto him, Masters, we have toiled all night and have nothing. Nevertheless, at that word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net began to do what? Break. They beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships. So this was a net breaking ship sinking catch. And when Simon Peter saw this, he's never seen this in his fishing ministry or fishing career. He fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O God. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the catch, at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when he had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. You have one life to live. And you know, the Bible says, James chapter 4, the life of a man is like a vapor. It appears for this moment, and the next moment is gone. Every one of us will stand before God one day to give account of ourselves. There are only two questions I tell people all the time God is going to ask you. One is the question of salvation. What did you do with Jesus? And the second is the question of stewardship. What did you do with your life? If you are ever going to make a difference, you have to be different. You cannot make a difference until you're different. For you to be different, you have to think differently. Because you cannot solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it. For you to think differently, you have to hear differently. Because it's what you hear that impacts your mind. Your life moves in the direction of your dominant thoughts. What has not crossed your mind will never cross your life. Anything that captures your mind has captured your life. So it's what you hear that impacts what you think. What you think impacts what you do. What you do determines the outcomes you get. I have a short time this morning, but I want to speak to you on don't swim in shallow waters. If you look at this scripture we read this morning, Peter, James, and John were professional fishermen. They know the best time to catch fish was at night. And they went about their fishing business. The Bible says they toiled all night long doing the thing the way they were supposed to do it as professional fishermen, but they caught nothing. Caught absolutely nothing. And in the morning, they were washing their nets in resignation. Business is bad. Nothing has happened. We don't have a catch. We don't have anything to sell. We are running at zero today. We don't have anything to give. We've done the best we can. And the result is still zero. And they were washing their nets. That means that they were, that fed, they were fed up. Nothing was working. Now, here walks in a carpenter. And he said, can I use your boat? I want to preach. And they said, go ahead. The Bible said when Jesus finished 
preaching. A carpenter now told fishermen, launch out into the deep and let your net be catch. I'm sure this man would have said, look, man, don't be funny. We are professional fishermen. Carpenters are not supposed to tell fishermen what to do. Carpenters are not supposed to tell fishermen how to catch fish. But Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, we will do that. I'm sure you know the rest of the story. He obeyed, he launched out into the deep. And they had a net breaking, ship sinking catch they've never had before at the word of a carpenter. And then, you know the rest of the, the boat, another ship, the ship was sinking. And Peter had an epiphany. And Jesus said, it's not really all about fishing and your fishing. From today is the last day you're going to catch fish. You're going to start catching men. Now, look up here, everybody. I want to share something with you. Divine direction is the secret of distinction. Divine direction is superior to effort. These gentlemen have all their life known how to fish. But they toil all night and caught nothing. I want to challenge you. I want you to pay attention to what God. In the afternoon, I'll be talking about, I'll be doing a workshop on staying or living which way. And then tomorrow, we're going to be talking about marketplace, how to succeed in the marketplace. I have enjoyed divine direction by the voice of God. Divine direction comes by divine instruction. When God tells you what to do and you do it, you are failure proof. Because God has never failed and God will never fail. And here's the challenge. Jesus said, launch out into the deep. You have been swimming in shallow waters. And you agree with me that we never catch big fishes in shallow waters. If you have a stream running by your house or behind your house, you're not going to find a whale in there. Are you going to find a whale in your stream? No. Whales don't go there. They go into the deep. That's where you're going to get them. You know, my good friend, Dennis is here. He's a professor of ONG and the chief medical director of uh, the Federal Medical Center in Yenagua. We, we have been friends. By the way, it was NCCMD and CMD that brought us together because he was the president at Podakot. So he used to come from Podakot to Enugu where I was president for us to travel to Joss and to the north because the distance was too long. And so we became, very, and we have been very good friends since then. And we, we both planned, we were doing, you know, I, 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 I did my internship at the University of Paraguay. We are actually on the same floor doing the internship. We are good, we are going to do ONG. Nobody can tell me in the world that I was not going to do ONG. I was so good with obstetrics and gynecology that it, it was amazing. I used to do cesarean session as... Um, uh, what did they call it? NYSC doctor here in Bachelor State. 20 minutes time, 20 minutes skin to skin. I did a rock chalk serpentectomy, ectopic pregnancy in the dark with torchlight. With a flicker of torchlight, I did it successfully. I had a distinction in physiology. My best was reproductive physiology. Nobody was going to tell me. In fact, we organized, we said, what the fuck, we're going to be professors. Today is a professor. Give, me, give the Lord a big hand for him. He's a professor of ONG, but I'm not. <laughs> Divine, and I said I was going to be one. I walked, when I left this country to go to South Africa, I went to do ONG. But here's the point I want to tell you. Even when you make plans for yourself, allow the Lord to guide you. Allow the Lord to give you divine direction. He gave him divine direction and established him and he's prospering where he is. The Lord took me in a different path altogether. I'm going to share my story with some of you in the afternoon. But the point I want to make to you is this. When you are determined to serve God, when I was a student, I don't know what you students are doing. I went to one of the campuses, I saw them playing around. We were not playing when we were students. We were serious with NCCMDS, then CMDA, we were serious. There's no state in this country I didn't go as a student. We were so dangerous that dangerous people thought we were dangerous. <laughs> when I talk to students, I tell them, don't try this at home. Don't do what we did. Some of us never went to class. I finished preaching in the north, came back one day, back to school when I was in medical school. I heard that the ophthalmology exam was next day. I did attend the posting. <laughs> I called one of the brothers. I said, you'll be reading all this while. Let me read your 
note. I collected this note and read all night into the exam hall. Went into the exam and was made the best result in ophthalmology. They fixed an ONG exam. I had to be in, is, was it, oh, 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 there's one university that used to be Lado K. I can't tell you. I just did there. I had to be in that place. So I stood in front of the board and I said, this exam that is coming, I cancel it. And I travel. But they, I said, oh, don't travel. I said, this exam, I cancel it. The exam held. I was giving zero because I didn't show up for the exam. <laughs> two weeks later, the consultant came into class two weeks later. Out of the place he was teaching. He said, that exam that was taken two weeks ago, I cancel it. I'm going to send you a new exam. They set a new exam. Now, your clap, you don't do this. <laughs> I don't want you to leave the place. Say, I, I heard Pastor Trick. I said, don't attack class. I didn't attack class. According to the grace given unto me, every man has grace operating his life. Work in your own grace. It's your grace that establishes in your own place. I was pastoring 22 secondary schools doing second MB. 22 secondary schools in Enugu. Those of you who are from Enugu, walk from Mbo, two making here back at night on foot. That place they used to have pythons. I went to class in the morning. I used to drive the school. The, the fellowship bus used to be packed in the anatomy lab so that I would go from the anatomy lab to pastor secondary. And they came back and went for two distinctions. Graduated this list of my class. And by the grace of God, I have enjoyed divine favor. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is that when you serve God and listen to the voice of God and allow him to direct you, God will help you. God will prosper you. Some of the seeds we sowed as students, it is now we are reaping it all. I got my wife from CMT. She was not in my campus fellowship. There was no way I would have met her. It was at the Eastern Zona Conference. I was... Listen. I don't know what is happening now. But I finished preaching the morning session. I went upstairs to pray. I said, nobody leaves this camp without my permission. My wife was at the conference. She came to take my permission to attend the elder sister's... Um, law school graduation. So I granted that permission and went back to praying. As I was pacing the room, praying upstairs, I paced close to the window. She had gone down. I was going across the lawn. Now, now, now. Now. <laughs> is superior to effort. He said, we've toiled all night. We caught nothing. My final MBBS met him. Some of you have heard my story. They gave me a case. I clacked this long case, clacked this patient. Checked everything. I, I, I couldn't get anything. All I knew was that the patient was, was hypertensive, but I knew something else was not right. I clacked, I clacked, and I was a bright student. Everybody that did, even registrars, failed that case in my school. Just as I was about to give up, the patient himself said to me, Doctor, open my side drawer. You will see something. Patient said, I opened the side drawer. I saw a lab test form from the consultant. I saw what they were asking for. And all this, and I put it back. <laughs> the two professors came. He said, this is the most difficult case. We don't expect you to know it. But at least show us you've clacked this patient and the kind of invasive. Nobody has got in this case. I was the last. I said to them, this is a case of hypertensive encephalopathy, secondary to a fiocromocytoma. <laughs> The patient had fiochromocytoma and was having this hypertensive episode that caused encephalopathy. I just said hypertensive encephalopathy secondary to a fiochromocytoma. They looked at me, he said, you have passed. <laughs> said, Nobody, even registrars couldn't guess what this patient was having. And the patient just said, look at my... 
strong. Divine direction is superior to effort. So we've tied all night. You see, this story, these guys were professionals like you. They knew how to fish. They knew how to catch it, but they caught nothing. Some of you are fishing, you're not catching anything. Because you're not working with divine direction. You're not allowing the Lord to lead you. I am addicted to divine direction. Divine direction is superior to academic performance. Divine direction, I have seen people who have distinctions in medical, they are not doing anything out there. I've seen people who just follow divine direction and they are mounting up with wings as eagles. Divine direction is superior to dexterity. It's superior to connection. Because when God gives you direction, he's, he's already blessed that direction he's giving you. I want to charge every one of you. God is calling you people to something. If you're here in this conference, you are not going back the same. The reason is because God has brought you here to impact your life. God has brought you here to transform your life. God has brought you here to transform the way you think. Because if you don't think differently, you're not going to make the difference you need to make in your generation. God has brought you here to challenge you. You have been swimming in shallow waters. Look up and begin to take big challenges. When I was in South Africa, God taught me a lesson I'll never forget. I was, a, I was, I, I was in a very difficult situation then. How many of you know that every man's glory is behind his story? If you have never heard a man's story, don't just celebrate his glory. I used to tell them in, in my church, I'm very vulnerable to them. I told them about when I begged for $2, 1200 in South Africa to eat. I ran out of money. I ran out of friends. How many of you know that when you run out of money, you won't have friends anymore? You call people, carry they, they won't pick up. You call, call, they won't pick up. Ten minutes later, you block your number and call them. They pick up. So they were with the phone. But they saw your number and they felt you were a liability. And God said something to me. He said, I said, God, help me. He said, the reason why I have not helped you is that you have made small plans. If you make small plans, I leave you for those plans. When you make big, I'm a big God. If you make big plans to accommodate me, I will move in and help you. From that day, I stopped making small plans with God. I act boldly. I believe God for big things. If I can't get to the sun, I can get to the moon. If I can't get to the moon, I can get somewhere, but I, by all means, I'll move forward. Here's the challenge I have. Don't swim in small water. The world is before you right now. With God, you decide your destiny. God has already decided your purpose, but you have to discover it and work in it. And what I want to challenge every one of you is to begin to think differently. When I wanted to apply for my master's in public health, I said I was going to apply to only two schools. I applied to Johns Hopkins. and Harvard. I looked and I said, what are the two top schools in America? Number one was Johns Hopkins, number two was Harvard. I canceled everyone. I applied only to, to those two. I got admission to both. I got scholarship in both. Now, I had a problem to decide. Now, listen to me. I'm talking about divine direction. I've worked for the Harvard AIDS Institute in Botswana. I was heading their largest site in Molopololi in Botswana. So, I knew all the folks. In fact, I had come back here to Nigeria at UCH as a consultant for APIN. When APIN, I don't know whether APIN is still here. So, I knew them well. So, in my mind, I, I, I was going to bust them. My mind was made up. When I knelt down to pray, Baltimore, Baltimore kept coming to my heart. Go to Johnson. It didn't make any sense. I had a scholarship to go to Harvard. I couldn't turn that down. I had a scholarship at Hopkins. I didn't know anybody in Baltimore. When I prayed divine devotion, God said to me, you can go to Baltimore where you don't know anybody. So I put out a fleece. I called one of my friends. I didn't tell him what I had. I said, look, man, you've done your MPH at Harvard. You're doing your PhD at Hopkins. If somebody were to ask you, where will you go? This is a guy I know that would have told me something different. He said, go to Hopkins. So I picked up my phone and I called him. I told him I was going to come. Little did I know that if I had gone to Boston, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now in Baltimore. Because when I got to Baltimore, I finished my MPH and PhD. By the way, I did my PhD in three years. You do it in five to six years. There's nothing as nauseating as an incompetent Christian. A Christian dollar is an anomaly. You can't be a Christian and you're at the bottom of the class. 
with the wisdom of God upon you. That's an aberration of destiny. So I said, they're, they're doing it in, in five, six years. I'll do mine in three years. I did mine in three years and graduated. It was after I graduated, I wanted to launch. And God said, this is the reason why I brought you to Baltimore. And we started a house fellowship in my house that has morphed to a church with people from 14 different countries. So I wear multiple hats. I'm bivocational. I'm working. I'm pastoring. I'm the chairperson or the chairman of the global CM, CMD Energy Global. I have marks your life. I have seven things I'm doing right now. And people ask me, how do you do? To? That's a common question. People ask me. I say, it's easy. By the grace of God. I just stay in my place. You have grace in your place. You have a consignment for your assignment. You have an allocation in your location. But it has to be by divine direction. So here's the challenge I have for every one of you. Because my time is almost up. I want to challenge some of you as just students. Your, your life is getting started. I want you to begin to believe God for big things. I want you to begin to believe God for things you've never... Be if you believe God for something small, God will leave you to do it yourself. Believe God for something big that can accommodate God. That after it is done, you yourself will know that it was God that did it for you. I have too many dangerous testimonies. I can't share it because I know people are watching this. Stuff. Dangerous if I tell you, you won't believe it. Even me, I, I don't believe it myself, but it has happened. By divine direction. Divine direction is superior to ambition. You may have your own ambitions. I want to be ONG. I wanted to be a professor at 35 or before 40. I wanted to have a fertility. I planned it with Oju. This is my friend here. He, he went ahead by divine direction. And God has accelerated. He became a professor, became the CMD of, by divine ordination. I don't want to tell you some of you what I'm If I tell you what I'm doing, some of you will not believe it. If I tell you what I've handled with my hands in terms of budget and money and people who report to me, you will not believe it. But I want you to know. <laughs> is that I should tell you? Come to my workshop in the afternoon because then it's not going to be still life. Then I'll tell you some things. But, but, but I, 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 I want you to don't swim in shallow waters. Come to people and say, don't swim in shallow waters. Don't swim. Don't swim in shallow waters. Don't swim, don't swim in shallow waters. Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down thy net for a catch. But here is the climax of this story for me. When I read this story many years ago, God brought something to my attention. Please don't miss this. If you miss this, you never had me speak this morning. I thought this was all about the miracle of multiplying of fish. But God showed me something in this passage of scripture that amazed me. This had nothing to do with fish. In fact, this had nothing to do with a net breaking ship sinking. This had nothing to do with, with a miracle. This miracle was something to attract the attention of Peter. The biggest miracle. Did you notice that? Can I ask you a question? If you just had the biggest net breaking ship sinking catch as a fisherman, what would you do ordinarily? Expand your business. Is that not true? Do some measures and acquisitions. Register business. Expand because more business is coming. You've got more fish. But this was the end of Peter's fishing career. Because it, was, it had nothing to do with... Okay, God bless you. It had nothing to do with... Let me take this off. I don't need this. It had nothing to do with... Please stay with me. I, I don't want you to miss this. Thanks. And I, don't, if you miss this, you didn't come to this conference. Listen to this. This encounter with Peter had nothing to do. Now, the net breaking, ship sinking catch was something like a bait to get the attention of Peter. This was about the call of God on Peter's life. Jesus said to Peter, you've been catching fish. You thought your life was about fishing. You thought you were going to end up your life and your career as a fisherman. But I have news for you. That's not where your destiny lies. Quick question. How many fishermen that lived 2,000 years ago do you know? How many fishermen that lived at the time of Jesus do you know? No. Jesus said, 
I want to make you significant in life. I want to take you out from obscurity. I want to take you out from shallow waters into deep waters. You have been catching fish. You thought your life was about fishing and catching fish. But from today, you're going to catch men. This illiterate fisherman became the first bishop of, Jeru uh, uh, of the church in, Jer in Jerusalem. Became a right hand, the head of the apostles. And the right hand man of Jesus. And wrote two books of the Bible. Even though he was an illiterate. Because Jesus refused for him to die as an ordinary fisherman. Some of you, you thought you just came to this conference because somebody invited you. Or because you, you came to this conference because of destiny. Something on the inside of you is telling some of you that this is the conference where my life will turn around. Some of you lack clarity. Clarity in marriage. Clarity. There's somebody here you've been asking I don't know what next to do with my life. I've graduated. I've done my internship. I've done my, my youth service. What next? I don't know what to do. I don't know where to step into. I don't know which direction to go. This weekend will bring clarity to your life. Because you're going to receive an encounter by the voice of the Holy Spirit. Divine direction comes by divine instruction. Jesus said, launch out into the deep. Let down your net. I'm Peter said, look, it's not possible. This same water, we fished and toiled in it all night long. We've labored here all night long. There is no fish in this water or we'll not cut it. And he was right. But he said, nevertheless. It doesn't make any sense, but I will do it. It doesn't add up, but I will do it. It doesn't, it doesn't just add up, but I will do it. And he stepped forward and he cast his net in there. The fish that was not there appeared. Broke the net, almost sinking the ship. That was the end of his fishing company, fishing career. The Bible says, look at it, verse 11 also. He said, he left all. Even the fish that broke the net and the ship, he abandoned it and began to follow Jesus. And that was the end. And from that time onwards, any time he went back to fishing, he was backsliding. Stand up, everybody. I don't have time, but I just sense in my spirit. When I came here, I, I arrived on two days ago on Wednesday. I sense in my spirit. I beg you, don't go back home. The same way you came here. You've made too much sacrifice. Some of you drove 10 hours. Some even 12 hours. I saw some of the uh, WhatsApp sleep in Lokoja. Don't come between Lokoja and Abuja. Some of you came from far places. How many of you drove more than 10 hours to be here? More than 10 hours. Almost, almost all of you. And then you're going to do another 10 hours back. Lift up your hands. Divine direction is superior to effort. Divine direction is superior to ambition. Divine direction by the voice of the Holy Spirit. It is not in a man to direct his ways. Jeremiah 10, 23. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct. He will direct. He will direct your path. Lift up your hands and call upon God today. The voice of God is coming to somebody right now. Divine direction, divine direction, divine direction, divine direction, divine direction. I receive divine direction. I receive divine direction. I receive divine direction. Divine direction. 
receive divine direction. Life is in phases. Men are in sizes. Receive divine direction for the next season. Receive divine direction for the next phase. Receive, receive, receive. Receive right now. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Divine direction. Divine direction. Divine direction. Let us see Patala Bakopodi. Lady Mashikla Baba 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 Jesus is here. time is up I encourage you to come I'll be dealing with some of these issues tomorrow doing uh, I don't know what they call it and this afternoon doing a workshop let me do something quickly one minute because my time is up I like to keep the time put your two hands on your eyes I just want to pray for you you're going to do two things for me and then I'll let you go father in the name of Jesus I pray for eyes that see. Eyes that see. Eyes that see. He said, what seest thou? He said, I see the word of an almond tree. He said, thou has well seen. I will hasten my word to perform it. The word of God is hasting for performance when you see well. See well, see well, see well, see well. Put your two hands on your ears. It's a covenant right for you to hear. Say, my sheep hear my voice. It's your covenant right to hear. Every spiritual deafness, go! Hear well, hear well, hear well, in the name of Jesus. Say after me, I'm blessed, I'm highly favored. The hand of God is upon my life. I can see well, I can hear well. In this dark world, I have the light of life. In this confused world, I have divine direction. In this upside down world, I'm right side up in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the God of heaven be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace and divine direction. In Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a big hand, everybody.